The Mountain didn't sleep last night and Wayne Gardner didn't stop talking, trying to explain his 170 kilometre an hour crash. I just came round like this and went across and hit the inside Oh, wall. you got to do the wind person. His badly bent Honda NSX looked headed for the scrap heap, but the volunteer TAFE apprentices spent the night reshaping the supercar. Gardner admitted his chase of pole position was why he lost it. Yeah, there's no excuses, it was a uh, driver's error, I'm first to put my hand up. But even if successfully rebuilt, there is still concern that the strength of the aluminium chassis might not be up to 12 hours of racing. A decision will be made later tonight. This morning, a final low-pressure practice session for the rest of the field. 55 cars will start the 12-hour at 5am tomorrow. And a great start for the two Mazdas, a slow start for the Lotus. But from the row one into the lead goes uh, Charlie O'Brien, supported well by Gary Walden from the second row. The night traffic continues thick and dark and difficult to identify. And then sideways off Skyline. I'm not sure whether it's a Falcon or a Commodore, but it's one of Australia's family cars and in a pile of bother because crunch. There's the Lotus Esprit. Now, John Bauer. He looks like he's in trouble, Tim. Uh, he's at the top of the mountain and he's going very slowly, so there's uh, obviously some problem. Well, we have a jam pad in the right-hand rear caliper. Pure and simple. Nothing else. That's nothing much you can do about it. Just Car get it out and get it fixed. But this is the car that's got the form on the board at the moment. 49 laps completed. Two hours and 13 minutes of racing done in a race that's to run 12 hours in glorious weather here on Mount Panorama. It's free in the... Like a little clock. That's fantastic, Will. Is the problem... All, all we've done is change two tyres and the brake pad wear is negligible, so we're looking real good for the long haul. Mark Brave, Will Hagen, how's the little Suzuki going? Uh, it seems to be going well at the moment, Will, so good. You've had a pretty busy time. Took you a long time to get into the class lead. to build a bit of a lead on that uh, Corolla number 30, John Faulkner, Jeff Full. Have you seen him off now, though? Oh, right, OK. Well, they're about a lap down then, I suppose. No, same lap as you, mate. They're not far behind. Are they? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to get my finger out of that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas Leutwheeler, Will Hagen in the commentary box. How's the Porsche going? The Porsche is doing very well, Will. Um, I'm uh, really amazed how uh, easy we can hold the uh, pace at 39s and 40s. Uh, dropping times. You're... You've been losing ground to the leading Mazda number 7. Yeah, because they're running at about 36s or 37s, and we're doing our planned 39s, 40s. So right. this is intended, yes. Nicholas, you're used to the classic tracks of Europe. What do you think of Mount Panorama? i got to say that Mount Panorama is just one of the best tracks I've ever been to. I really compare it a little bit with the Nürburgring, you know, the old one? Yeah. And uh, i got to say, this is the uh, Nürburgring of the Southern Hemisphere here. It's real road racing, isn't it? It's real road racing, really, I've got to say. In just half an hour since the pace car went away, Gary Walden's Mazda has sprinted to an advantage of 40 seconds over the Porsche of Peter Fitzgerald and Nicholas Lutweiler. The race is turning very much into a tortoise and hare affair. These Mazdas are lapping at one, two minutes, 34 seconds and going even faster. So that's two seconds under last year's lap record. This pit stop, sensationally quick for, uh, for Walden, 26 seconds. The Porsches, however, have a four pit stop advantage in the eight hours remaining in the James Hardy 12 hour. And that's a lot of time for the Mazda to make up. Well, Gary Walden is ripping around the track at the moment and his co-driver is sitting right next to me, Alan Jones. G'day. G'day, Jim. Climbing all over the Porsches, John Smale said. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we have to. I mean, we're, we're lapping sort of 35s relatively comfortably. Uh, we're not stretching the cars. We're not revving them as much as we could be. But we feel we, you know, we probably have to do that to make up for the extra pit stop. No problems? No, so far, touch wood. Yeah, long way to go yet, though. <laughs> it certainly is, yeah. I mean, I keep looking at the clock and it feels like about midday and it's only about 10 o'clock. It seems to me like all the guys out there are having a tremendous time. I've seen a couple of great little dices. Is that what you do out there, just have a little dice every minute, just to keep the interest up? Well, no, I mean, uh, here's my uh, co-driver now, Gary Walton, who's doing a fabulous job. I mean, he's just so clean and smooth and he's lapping very, very consistently and very fast. Yeah. Um, 
the major problem with us is that um, a lot of the guys are having a lot of dices and you, you come across a sort of four or six car dice. You and, come up behind. Yeah, and you can't just sort of double guess and go through because, you, you know, like one model is concentrating on passing the guy that's in front of him and he hasn't seen you and he can come over and hit you. So you really have to uh, stay back and wait your turn and, and pick the gaps when they become available. In a race this long, is concentration a problem? Um, yes and no, but as I said before, the three or four cars having their own little race helps the concentration. You know, you really got to uh, concentrate all the time and, you know, I'm talking to the guy in the pits and watching the revs and the temperatures and, uh, you know, we're pushing the cars relatively hard, although we've got a bit up our sleeve for later on if we need to. All right, have a good time when you get back in the car. Thanks, Tim. Just stay there for a second. There is your car, car number seven, the Mazda RX-7, and doing it great. Look at Gary Walden using all that roadway. He's having a fabulous time. Now, if we can pick up Juan Fangio's car, I think Peter McKay's in it at the moment. Uh, Will Hagen, if you can hear me, I drove one of these fabulous little MR2s up here from Sydney, uh, courtesy of my mate uh, Ian Mayer at Sydney City Toyota, and they're going great. I look at the leaderboard now, and uh, the car is running eighth overall. We're still seeing the master. I think we're just trying to pick up uh, car two. Here it comes. It's one of an elite group of cars, Jim, that has a 100% finishing record. It's won its class the last two years. And I think I'm right in saying that none have dropped out in, the, in that time either. They're, all the starters have been finishers. Suzuki actually heads that, and they've had yeah. 10 starters and 10 finishers over the two years, a 100% record over quite a number of cars. But this car's travelling pretty quickly, as you say. It's in eighth outright. It's boarded uh, by, I was going to say two Falcons, but things have changed a little bit since Just I last bit, looked. Yeah. But... Uh, uh, in the pits, the Lotus has Again. got further problems. Car 18 has got up to 15th outright. It's been back as far as 37th. It's wandered about, uh, been back out to 23rd, as I say, got back to 15th. No wonder. Fastest lap of the race, a new and outstanding lap record, faster than its qualifying time. Two minutes, 31. 0.77. Now compare that with the best from the Mazdas, a 33.77 for car 7, a 35.07 for car um, 1, and the two Porsches lapping consistently, Tim, at around 36s. All right, thank you. Well, let's have a quick look at our leaderboards in this update so that you're completely up to date with the race. The classes first. In the A's, there's the Suzuki Swift still, followed by one, two, three Corollas and the other Swift. In B, the Nissan Pulsar Triple S and the TX3, then the other Pulsar, Mazda and the Citroen BX16 in Class C. The Porsches, of course, both of them. Then the Honda NSX. Wayne Gardner still in the car, I think. Then the two Falcons. D-Class, two Commodores and the Falcon. In the S-Class, the MR2's going just terrific. Then the Honda CRX in the middle of the two of them, or the four of them, rather. And the Turbos, the two Mazda RX-7s, of course, then the Nissan GTR, the Mitsubishi. Overall, the Mazda RX-7, I can tell you, followed by the Porsche, the other Mazda, the other Porsche, and the Honda NSX. That hasn't changed for quite some time, and uh, down past them is the Nissan GTR Skyline, and uh, followed by a Commodore, no, Falcon, rather, then the MR2, then another MR2. So that's the position here at Mount Panorama in Bathurst, and we'll be back with another update in one hour. See you then from Mount Panorama.